So have you ever gone to the grocery store looking for some of those big dino bones that you see on Fred Flintstones, those big beefy ribs, and you just end up finding these guys? And often you wonder, do I grill those? Do I smoke them? What am I supposed to do with these things? Well, today we're gonna find out, stick around. Before we get started, if you don't mind, let's do a little housekeeping. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and smash that bell. So these, uh, these beef back ribs right here that we're talking about, they're pretty chunky. So these come off of the uh, rib roast, right underneath the rib roast. If you've ever cooked a rib roast, you've seen those bones on the bottom. Well, this is what those are, and they've just halved the rack and made them two small separate racks in this cryovac package. People often wonder, do I grill these? Do I smoke them? What do I do with them? Especially in uh, areas like where I live in Arkansas, you don't see a lot of beef ribs just laying around. Because here in Arkansas, pork is king, but that's starting to change a little bit, and I'm here for it. So today we're gonna put these on the smoker. Uh, I got a new toy I'm gonna show you and uh, let's get started. So earlier in the video, I mentioned I got a new smoker. Well, I didn't really get one, I made one. This is my new UDS Ugly Drum Smoker, complete with nameplate with logo on it, the whole nine yards. Uh, worked on this over the last uh, month or so, just kind of picking at it here and there. So that's what we're gonna roll with today. I got the nameplate on both sides. I decided if I was going to do it, then go ahead and do it right. I got a plant in the way, but you get the idea. I also found a Weber kettle grill online on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, so I just repurposed the lid. And as you can see here, I just have a Weber kettle, 21.5 uh, inch uh, grate. Um, and I have bolts for other grates. If I want to put uh, a couple more racks in there, then I can do that. And I also have a charcoal basket. Now you can look up all this stuff online, how to build it. Uh, I made a few little shorts on TikTok here and there, but uh, there's plenty of instructional videos on how to make one of these. And you can go check out my buddy, The Fishing Hobby. I'll put a link in the description box below. He has a, a really excellent video on how to build one of these ugly drum smokers. As you can see here at the bottom, um, that is my air intake. I have four of those uh, evenly spaced around the drum. Uh, if you're looking for an inexpensive option to have a great smoker, uh, then I would definitely recommend a UDS. Uh, I had one for about 10 years and it just it ended up rusting out and I didn't take the best care of it. Make sure you're using a food safe barrel. So anyway, uh, let's take a look. We have some charcoal that's left from my last cook. I've ran uh, some pork butts on here a couple weeks ago for some uh, customers and we still have some of that charcoal left over. One thing I love about a UDS is the uh, efficiency. I mean, it's just extremely efficient. So let's refill that basket and put some post oak wood chunks in there. All right, we're gonna roll with Royal Oak Lump Charcoal. Fill that basket up. That'll be more than enough. I got a few post oak wood chunks we'll just drop down in there. Now my buddies over at Burn Fire Starter Company sent me a bunch of these fire starters. Just a little pouch with some uh, wood pellets in it and some wax. So this is what I like to use right now. Once I run out, maybe they'll send me some more, but maybe I have to buy them this time. I don't know. <laughs> All you have to do with these is, is light them on the bottom in that little corner right there, and then just drop it on down into your charcoal. Nothing to it. While that uh, gets up to temp, we're gonna prepare our ribs. Let's get those beef ribs seasoned up. There's nothing to these things. Just. Take them out of the cryovac, make sure you have a sharp knife. There we go. I like to score down the uh, the back of the rib, make sure that's the back, not the front. This makes it easier to open the package. Never cut towards yourself. One rack, two racks. Hey, that one's about to come off. That's not great. Let's pat these dry. Flip them over, do the same thing. These are different than pork ribs, not just because they're beef. The structure of the ribs are different. The membrane is a lot thicker than what it is on a pork rib, and the membrane on these beef ribs actually has a function. It holds all these ribs together because once you start cooking the ribs, that, uh, that membrane can shrink up, and if you, if you remove it totally, all the ribs will be separate, and we don't want that. We want a whole rack. We want that membrane on there to keep the uh, ribs in place. But these are pretty beefy, <laughs> meaty ribs. Check them out. Let's flip these back over after your anatomy lesson is over. See if there's any little things to trim off like that. And for our binder, we're gonna use some Cholula hot sauce. I think this is gonna add a little extra something. Get that nice and evenly spread. 
you don't have to season the bottom side or you don't have to put seasoning on the bottom side if you don't want to i just like to i think you know having this on there especially this hot sauce it'll add an extra dimension of flavor of course you want to do the same thing to the meat side man it smells good love this stuff oh yeah all right nice and saucy and next we're going to hit it with some rice barbecue meat rub from arkansas got to support my arkansas peeps go ahead and roll these over and get some on the bottom side just say we did don't go crazy that's good enough nice even application Since we got the rub on, we're just gonna let these sit and hang out and uh, we're just gonna wait until the UDS is up to temperature and then we'll throw them on. All right, folks, our smoker is up to about 240 degrees. So let's get these babies on there. We're not using a heat diffuser or anything like that today. We're just gonna let these uh, ribs hang out on the smoker directly over the coals for as long as it takes, and we'll be back. All right, those ribs have been going for about an hour and a half. Let's see what we got. We're starting to get a little pullback on the bones, as you can see there. So this is the point where uh, we wanna hit it with some spritz to make sure that we don't have any crispy bits. We've got really good color. I'm gonna consider uh, wrapping these in about 30 minutes or so, but let's uh, get the spritz on first. Let's check back in in about 30 minutes. All right, let's check these guys. It's been about 45 minutes. You got a lot of pullback on the bones. The colors exactly, well, once the smoke clears, you'll be able to see better. Lots of pullback on the bones, and that color is exactly where I'd like to have it. So let's go ahead and get these guys wrapped in some aluminum foil. So what we wanna do here is just go ahead and hit these again with our apple cider vinegar uh, spritz. Go ahead and flip them over. Okay. Next, let's get some of this Wagyu beef tallow in there. Introduce that to the party. We'll just put it right between the two racks. That'll melt down and uh, provide us a nice layer of fat, which is flavor. <laughs> so let's get this wrapped up. Put them back on the smoker. I wanna make sure these bones don't poke through. All right, back on the smoker. All right, folks, so we're back at the smoker. Uh, it's been about two hours. These beef ribs have gone a little bit longer than what I wanted to. Had to get some stuff done, done around the house. So let's take a look. Got plenty of bone exposure there. It's looking really good. Let's flip these guys over. Man, that looks tasty. Uh, let's probe this real quick and kind of get an idea how done we are. All right, just go in between the bones. Hey, these are really tender. Probing just perfectly tender. There's a tad of resistance in some spots. So I think what I want to do is go ahead and uh, sauce these. Let's see where we are in temperature wise. We're 187. So yeah, let's get some sauce on these and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so here lately I've been partial to this redneck lipstick. They make a few different types. This is a sweet and smoky. Glaze them on there just like that, nothing to it. Cover those back up for about 15 minutes and uh, we'll come right back. Just wanna check on this glaze. I think I probably need to uh, brush that on a little bit better. Yeah, let's get that brushed on. I'm not gonna really brush. I don't wanna leave brush streaks on there. Really just a personal preference. Looking good. Kind of dab that on, adds a nice sheen to the bones. Looking good. We'll let those go about another five minutes. All right, guys, I got these ribs pulled off. We've let them rest for about 20 minutes because they are pretty dang hot. So let's see what we got. All right. These turned out really pretty. I know that for sure. Let's just take one rack off for now. 
cover that one back up so the flies don't get to us too bad. I'm fighting them like crazy out here. That's this time of year. Man, get out of here. So uh, we're just going to cut right down the middle on this one. All right, as you can see, uh, this turned out pretty good. It got a good smoke ring. It's tender. Let's go ahead and give it a bite. Mm. Clean off the bone. Smoky, peppery, all the things you're looking for in good barbecue. Mm, that's good stuff. Comes right off the bone, just like I said. All right, folks, there's nothing to this cook. These beef back ribs are a hit. You got to give them a try. Uh, you see them sit in the grocery store. Don't come home and grill and put them on the smoker and follow this video. Do everything that I did and it's going to be wonderful. I promise. Hey, do me a favor, go ahead and like, subscribe, and smash that bell. It's going to let you know when I upload new content, and it helps us out a lot. We certainly appreciate it. Hey, thanks for stopping by Cask and Q. We'll see you next time.